Hey, what's up? It is Wednesday. Wednesday? Today Wednesday? Today's Wednesday all day long. Um, and I am uh, in uh, BMI's Texas 10 right there. I was just pulling up that up. Pulling that up. BMI, of course, is the uh, music distribution service right there. Licensing. I am with BMI, and I'm in the Texas 10 right there. I'd be jolly, too. Right there. That's me. You can't read it, but I'm right there at the top. Bam! Chad Prather. I'd be jolly, too. And then a whole bunch of other songs that have explicit language. <laughs> <laughs> I should have cussed a little bit in that deal. Maybe I don't know. Anyway, but that's the top of the list. I like it. Um, it's not a rating. It's not a ranking. Uh, but it is an honor for BMI to put you up there in the Texas 10. Uh, so if you have not already done so, add I'd Be Jolly to to your Christmas playlist. Uh, Donald Trump's going to be a dictator, guys. I don't know if you figured this out or not, but Donald Trump is going to be a dictator. We've known it from the beginning. Um, he wanted to be a dictator last time, but Capitol Police, they thwarted the plan. Um, those, all those unarmed insurrectionists that walked into the, were ushered into the Capitol building uh, by, uh, by uh, you know, in there, those grandmas with selfie sticks, they were going to overthrow the election. Trump tried, but this time he means it. Uh, let's go to a clip, boys, and let's play clip number one. This is from his town hall with Sean Hannity. Donald Trump, here we go. Issue, though, because the media has been focused on this and attacking you yeah. under no circumstances. You are promising America tonight. You would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. Yeah. Except Look, what? He's going crazy. Except for day one. Meaning? I want to close the border and I want to drill. That's drill, not a, that's drill. that's not no, no. that's not retribution. I got I'm going to be I'm going to be, you know, he keeps we love this guy. He says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, no, no. Other than day one, we're closing the border and we're drilling, drilling, drilling. After that, I'm not a dictator. So that, okay? that, that sounds to me like you're going back to the policies <laughs> when you were president. That's All right. exactly. So executive orders, rock and roll. Let her have them. Now, again, the left will jump all over that. See, he says he wants to be a dictator. If he's dictator on day one, he'll be dictator forever. He's going to be president for life. Uh, but again, guys, common sense needs to prevail. Even though it never does, common sense needs to prevail. Don't forget the people who are slamming Trump for saying things like that are also the people that think that you have to check, you know, somebody's genitalia before they can compete against girls in women's sports uh it's a disaster guys the southern border is a mess um my orcas came out i think it was yesterday testified that the southern border is under control that biden's border policy has been strong from day one anybody who thinks that says that believes that's absolutely asinine Here's what Trump had to say about Biden's border policy. Play clip number two. And we have people going around really destroying our country. They're destroying our country at the border. They've, they will allow, in my opinion, because you don't hear the real numbers, 15 million people into our country by the time Biden gets out, which hopefully will be very soon. If they get another term, this country is finished. By the time he gets out... And the people are coming from prisons all over the world. They're coming from mental institutions all over the world. And they're terrorists. And this country is going to be suffering a very big price. It's amazing that it hasn't happened. And interestingly, I had very strong borders, the strongest ever. We had the strongest border in history. All they had to do is leave. Mr. Leave Brandon Judd and Mr. leave Tom Homan and leave all these guys. Let me put this up on the screen. Borders. Yeah, we had the strongest me, borders in history. Let me history. put this on the screen. Go ahead. We, Iran is the number one state sponsor of terror. Right. Okay, well, foreign nationals founded our southern border w because of Joe Biden's open borders. Right. From Iran, 659. From Syria, 538. From Afghanistan, 6,386. Egypt, 3,153. 12,605 from Russia, 26,113 from China. Now, could you explain to me, do you, what do you think the odds are that among that group of people from our top geopolitical foes in most cases, yeah. 
that terror cells have entered the country because of the 8 million people Joe Biden has allowed into this country unvetted. What are the odds? The odds are 100 percent. Look, why do we have 26,000 people? How scary is that? Think of it. It's 100. No, it's 100 percent. And by the way, we had nothing during my remember, I had the travel ban. I said, I don't want people coming from countries that want to blow us up. And we put a travel ban and some people thought I was discriminating. But if you think about it. I went four years with no problem. We didn't have any problem. We didn't have buildings being knocked down. We didn't have World Trade Centers. We didn't have any of that. We had no, we had a very strong travel ban. And if you came from a country that was a country, I can tell you right now, I can name every one of them. We just didn't want you. I'm sorry. And we actually had it passed by the Supreme Court. And that was a big day. But we didn't have a problem. We just didn't want you. Sorry. (laughs) I love that. And guess what? We don't. Yesterday on social media, I was told that I'm a racist uh, for, you know, the idea that we would throw the borders open and how that is wrong. And these people are coming across. That's thirty nine. That is thirty nine thousand people in 22 and 23 from Russia and China. Now, if me saying I don't want twenty seven thousand people or I'm sorry, 12, 13000 people from Russia coming across the border. Those are white people. Those are white people coming over from Russia. I don't want those white people coming into our country illegally. Does that make me a racist or does that make me smart? I think it gives me a lot of common sense. I think that you all agree with me that you don't want. And by the way, when you talk about 26,000 and something Chinese coming across, I thought it was you guys that didn't like Asians. I, I thought it was the folks on the left that were so pissed off about the Asians. Because the, the, the most successful demographic in the United States of America is Asian people. Uh, does that make us racist to say, hey, Chinese don't need to be coming across. Chinese nationals don't be coming across uh, illegally. I, and again, when you start taking 39,000 Russians and Chinese, I'm, I'm doing the math here roughly in my head, but 39,000 in the last year and a half, last two years coming across, that's bigger than most of the towns y'all live in. You can't handle that kind of influx. You can't, if, if let's say every single one of them decided, hey, we're going to take over this town. You can't stop it. Where are they going? What are we doing with them? And to say that we are hate filled with our rhetoric to say you got to put an end to this. I, I haven't even mentioned a brown person at this point. I'm talking about Asians and white people who have come across. These people have been indoctrinated to hate America. And we're going to throw the doors open. They're going to come across. Sorry, we don't want you. We don't want you. If you're going to come in here illegally, We don't want you. Our friend Matt Marsden, his son, who's British, has four more years before he can legally come to America. Now, Matt Marsden has been living here. He's been living in California. He's an American citizen now. Four more years before his son can come to America, and yet we've got 30 9,000 Chinese and Russians, forget the other nationalities that are there, forget the other 145, 155, 160 nationalities that have been apprehended or, uh, you know, addressed at the southern border. His son, who's British, can't come for another four years. That's asinine. That is ludicrous. And for Mayorkas to say that Biden's border policy has been solid from day one, no. You, you, you got it. I had another person two days ago who said these aren't people who are coming from Middle Eastern countries or China at the southern border because that's all the way across the ocean. Right, dumbass. These ignoramuses out there have no clue what's truly coming in here. These are the same people that want Dwayne the Rock Johnson to run for president, who, by the way, was at the Capitol yesterday and the Pentagon. Why? taking very important meetings. Why is The Rock meeting with the Pentagon to smell what The Rock is cooking? And then you go in the comments under that, please, would you just run for president? We want you walking through the White House. Maybe, we're, maybe we should just go ahead and just 
bail out of this greatness of history. Maybe, maybe we should just go ahead and level it out and just be like, America was a good idea. It had its run. But apparently the people that America fostered, maybe we weren't that great of an idea because the type of freedom we fought for and the type of values that we instilled and, and tried to institute apparently weren't strong enough to last through the generations because it was so effective that it spoiled the hell out of this current generation to the point where they had to go out there and manufacture some kind of oppression and make America and all of its values some kind of major enemy. Barack Obama did exactly what he set out to do when he wanted to, to, to make America another globalist country and let the UN run things and take away American exceptionalism and make that an actual curse word to say that nationalism is something that's evil, protecting your borders is something that's racist, to sit there and try to instill the idea that for us to be better than other nations is somehow uh, debaucherous on our part because we've become such an evil, nasty society that is, you know, we, we believe that we're the great Satan. Just like the extreme Islamists say, we're the great Satan. And so now you have TikTokers reading Osama bin Laden's letter to America and finding empathy in that. Maybe it's time for us to go away into the dustbin of history. They can write books about us later on. And you know what? They won't talk about the liberations that we created and had in World War II. It won't talk about the great things that we did in terms of commerce and industry and invention. It won't talk about the way that we bailed so many countries out in the middle of their wars and disasters. But it'll talk about Jim Crow laws and slavery. It'll talk about lynchings. It will talk about uh, how we had internment camps for Japanese during World War II. It'll tell about all the evils of America. It will talk about the civil rights movement and the assassinations. And it will talk about all these negative things that we had to try to have from BLM rallies to Me Too parades in order to fight the evils that were America. Because history is going to look back and say, you know what? We don't understand why the whole world has now gone to shit into this black chaotic void. What could be missing? Maybe it was America. Oh, no, America wasn't the solution. Don't you know? America was evil. America was this terrible, terrible place. Well, unfortunately, folks, with an open border the way we have it, and to continue lying to ourselves and say, you know what? This administration, this dementia-ridden Ignorant administration, this woke, progressive, ideological administration that's being pressured by a bunch of stupid women in Congress to be more and more progressive to the point of socialism. And by the way, Trump is right. If he gets another term, if Joe Biden gets another term, America's finished. They will fully embrace Marxist socialism and we will be dead in the water. And it won't take long to figure it out because you weird beta ass cucks out there that don't have a brain cell that works and no firing synapses who believe that you can feel your way into reality are going to learn the hard way when 39,000 Chinese and Russians that have been trained to hate your guts are going to camp out on your doorstep and demand your shit and then people like... Dick Durbin, the senator from uh, Illinois, is going to say, you know what, let's take these illegals, let's take these people who crossed our border illegally, and let's give them a path to citizenship by arming them and training them and putting them in our military, and guess what they're going to do to you? You will be persona non grata, and they will wipe you off the map. So good luck with that, jackass. You've created your own doom, and you've put your own nail in your own coffin, and that's where we're headed as, quote, America. All right. If there's a future, you need to diversify your savings with physical precious metals while stockpiling silver in your home safe. Birch Gold Group's most popular special of the year now through December 22nd. Here's the thing. For every $5,000 you invest with Birch Gold, they'll send you one ounce silver a Silver Eagle coin for free. Text CHAD, I spell it CHAD, to 989898 to claim your eligibility now. You can purchase gold and silver and have it shipped directly to your home or you can have Birch Gold's precious metal specialist help you convert an existing IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA in gold for no money out of pocket. They'll send you free silver for every $5,000 you purchase. So keep it for yourself or give something with real value as a stocking stuffer this year. Text the word CHAD to the number 989898. Clay, what are we doing here?
Come back to me. Claim your eligibility. And uh, they have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Thousands of happy customers. Now's the best time to buy gold from Birch Gold. Text Chad to 989898. Claim that eligibility on free silver on qualifying purchases, but you got to do it before December 22nd. Hang tight. We'll be right back. You popped in. Hello. Hi. Hi. I don't, I don't start with me. Listen, you don't start with me. I told you I'm in a mood. I don't even know if you want me on your set. Well, look a, at me I being a, a glutton for punishment. Yeah, I am a, a huge liability right now. Are you? Yeah, I'm just, it's been a morning. Yes. Why are you looking at me like that? I like dead air. <laughs> I don't. I know. I hate it. I know. It's the beauty of a podcast. They know we're still here. Do they? No, they know. This ain't the radio. No, if it's like five seconds or more, they're probably checking like their devices to make sure it didn't pause. By and large, I don't like dead air either, but sometimes it requires it in here just to watch you see if I need to de-escalate you. Why do your hands look like they're AI? You got a lot of fingers there all crossed. What? I don't know. Oh, it's the ring, your big ass ring, <laughs> that big diamond. I was like, oh, that, I thought that was another fingernail. No. <laughs> the way your fingers were crossed. Well, usually I do do the... Do you see where, uh, let's go ahead and piss you off even further. Great. Do you see where AOC <coughs> yesterday said that, um, you know, cracking down, I'm paraphrasing, but cracking down on trans people in sports uh, is going to force uh, minors basically to be sub subject to uh, genital searches um, before they can compete. And so that, therefore, is going to be something that we don't want. We don't want to have to search genitals on minors to see if they're who they say they are or aren't who they say they are. There really should be like a required IQ test to get into Congress. I yeah. thought, you know, the founding fathers were right on a lot, but I feel like they missed the mark there. There should be a little bit more regulation on who we allow to you represent would think, us. You would think, when Sarah's talking, move the camera over to her. Whenever there's another, now I'm talking now, come back over to me. <laughs> there should be a thing where bartenders know how to check IDs. Yeah, yeah, there should be. Well, I mean, she- Or like a birth certificate? Yeah, I mean, she should know that very well. Well, I don't know how good she was as a bartender. Maybe she didn't even meet that threshold. Yeah. She sucks at her job now. She might have sucked or, at her job before too. Or maybe bartenders don't know that kids that do sports like the schools actually require mm. they go get an annual physical and a birth certificate and a birth certificate mm -hmm. and i remember there was this one time that uh i was going to be playing in a baseball tournament one summer and i had to have a birth certificate and my parents being the way they are didn't know where it was <laughs> and so yeah. we had to overnight it mm -hmm. from the hospital which was in new jersey because yes i was born there mm -hmm. And uh, they had to overnight it to get it down here. Yeah, I mean, uh, also, I don't know who she's kidding because there's no kid, teen, whatever, who you can't tell what their actual gender is. That's right. It's very obvious. And forget the fact that every football and baseball season, I had to go to the hospital. They actually had a night where we went to the hospitals. All the teams from the area went. They were going to play sports. And they had mass physicals. And they... Funnel us through, like cattle, just run us through the room, bend over, touch mm -hmm. your toes, let's check this, now pull your pants down, turn your head and cough. We did all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Never felt sexually violated by it. It is fascinating that uh, the trans people, in AOC's opinion, get that sort of uh, you know special treatment and compassion because I don't seem to recall the women, the girls no. that are actually in that locker room, some of whom, you know, if you're in like Loudoun County, are getting sexually assaulted. Yeah. I would say that, that that would be a little bit worse than a uh, you know genital search, Yeah, according and, to AOC. And I th Fascinating. We don't get that type of treatment. Yeah, and I, and I don't know that we necessarily need to show the clip. Uh, let's do it because I love Riley. Play, play, uh, play clip number seven. This, this is Riley uh, testifying before Congress, Riley Gaines. Uh, play that clip number seven to me that although the title of this hearing implies a much needed discussion, we're likely going to be forced to listen to transphobic bigotry. Unsafe, unfair, and discriminatory practices towards women must stop. Inclusion cannot be prioritized over safety 
and fairness. And Ranking Member Lee, if my testimony makes me transphobic, then I believe your opening monologue makes you a misogynist. Thank you. <laughs> I have, as the saying goes. Uh, Madam Chair, excuse me, I move to have uh, the gentlewoman's words taken down. <laughs> Madam Chair, she's engaging in personalities. All right, you, go, you can go ahead and cut it right there, Dan. The, um, I, just to, just to kind of sum that up, they didn't take that down. They let it course. stand that yeah. she called her a misogynist. Well, because she was well, also like, OK, so you're allowed to call me a transphobic bigot, yeah. but I'm not allowed to respond in kind. Right. No, 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 no. That's not how it works around here. Yeah, exactly. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Honey. I, I love that stupid look on her face when they're looking over her shoulder and they're like, yeah. oh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll withdraw. Yeah. You called her a transphobe. Mm -hmm. And Riley went out and later on tweeted, said, I shouldn't as a 23 year old have to be coming in here to testify before Congress over what a man and a woman is. Mm -hmm. This is dumb. Mm -hmm. This is the world we're living in. And yes, it's dumb. And I'm tired. I, I've never pulled any punches. You've never pulled any punches. But I'm tired of, of a world that tries to coddle these mentally ill people who want to go in there. And then somebody underneath her tweet said, Riley, you never competed against a man. Unbelievable. The fuck you say? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what William Thomas is, but if you zoom in on the one piece bathing suit, there's a dick there. Yeah. And balls. Those costumes oh my, make it obvious. Oh my God, suits. Chad, I can't believe you said zoom in on his. Zoom in on it, damn it. Let's go ahead and check. AOC said we shouldn't, but apparently we have to. Yo, I don't know. We don't have to on this one. It's very clear there's in the swimsuit. Dick. There's a there's a dick and balls in there's there. There's a dick and the balls. <laughs> it's very clear. There's a dick and the balls in the bathing suit. I said no search necessary. No, it's which there. leads me back to my original point of you know sometimes you just know we just always know yeah. we know. Yeah, and by the way, you don't have to check their genitals. AOC, it, it, their blood test will reveal it. Mm -hmm. Every so will the it. giant Adam's apple on William <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> yeah. The five o'clock shadow. Yeah. Uh, all on these Dylan things. Mulvaney. So I'm um, I'm sick to death of this nonsense. Sick to death of it. It's it's gross, it's abjectly horrible, and it's it's idiocy. Mm -hmm. So I again, and you know, burn it down. I, I think this kind of goes uh, to what I was talking with someone about this morning, which was a, a different topic, but the same overall to? point. Well, it's just on Twitter. I wasn't oh, okay. talking All to right. anyone. Easy. Um, did you get jealous? Well, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> but uh, you know that. There is a subsect of Republicans, conservatives who are like, well, just leave them, what, however they want to live their lives, just leave them alone. I who are they that. hurting? Well, who that. are they hurting? And it's like, that mentality right there is how we got to 23 year old Riley Gaines having to testify in front of Congress about what a man and a woman is. That mentality it, right there. It goes back to my current motto, and that is Jesus wasn't nice. Right. <laughs> Jesus, the word nice all the way up until the 17th century meant ignorant. Mm. And I've had so many people come at me and say, well, we should still be nice. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. You can be gracious. Mm -hmm. You can be kind. Mm -hmm. You can be generous. But you ain't got to be nice because the truth ain't nice. Exactly. Right. And it's much more important to speak truth yeah. than be nice. So that's the whole thing. When I say you're fat, that's not nice, but it may save your life. Right. Like, no, kid, you need to quit pigging out. Every time you see a candy bar, you need to quit. Mm -hmm. It might save your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It ain't nice. Mm -hmm. If I say, hey, you know, um, <laughs> those giant ass caterpillar eyebrows you went and spent money to get, you need to quit with that because when you go to school, you're probably going to get bullied because you look like crap. <laughs> that ain't nice, but it's the truth. American Idol has people who get on TV and humiliate themselves trying to sing and it takes a Simon Cowell to say, you suck. Mm. Or Randy to go, that's a no for me, dog. <laughs> and these people walk out crying and humiliated on national television. Uh, and they become an instant meme. You know why? Because their parents were nice mm -hmm. and didn't say, this ain't for you. Right. And you know what? You're going to have people with a 42% suicide rate. Who are going to say, I'm another gender. And their parents go, okay, let's do that. And then dumbasses like Nikki Haley said, well, mm -hmm. there shouldn't be a law about this. You just leave it to the parents. Well, we've proven that the parents are freaking morons. Right, right. The parents are the problem. They're nice. Mm -hmm. Done with being nice. Me too. We'll get into your psychosis in a minute. Okay. <laughs> All right, listen, get some relief factor. Get it, get it, get it. I said last week my gout acted up. I got back on the relief factor. Gout's gone. 
we know. Wow. That's good stuff. I'm telling you, it, it really works is. for me. And it works very quickly. And it might not work for everybody, but it does work for a lot of people. Worked for In me fact, too. what they've found is that 70% of the people who buy it keep on taking it. So it'll reduce your pain. You got the chronic ailments. You know it's inflammation. Inflammation not only causes that pain, but it leads to other types of diseases. Relief Factor has the all-natural ability to keep those inflammation markers in check. They do it for me. I bet they'll do it for you. You say, I don't want to take another. Trust me, you're going to like this stuff. So I can get you the trial pack, three weeks of it for $19.95, less than 20 bucks to reduce the pain. Go to relieffactor.com or call them 800, the number four relief, relieffactor.com. See if it works for you like it works for me. Feel the difference. We'll be right back. So if you're watching this on linear television or uh, whatever, you may be watching it on, I think just linear television. This is the final block of the show. And the reason is because we're about to go to tonight's uh, Republican debate. You'll be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Glenn Beck will be a part of it. Stu will be a part of it. Ali Stuckey will be a part of it. Steve Dace. Um, I'll you. be a part of it. <laughs> and I don't know who else. Would have led with that. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I'm an honorable mention around here, okay? I but, but, disagree. But hang around. Let's, we'll, we'll have uh, some live conversation during the debates as well. Uh, you and I will be doing the lead up to it along with uh, some of those other people I mentioned. <laughs> and then uh, it's going to be a long night here at The Blaze, but it's going to be well worth it. Uh, if you don't have a subscription to The Blaze, you can get it at blazetv.com right now. Get $30 off with promo code DEBATE tonight on your annual subscription and uh, we'll give you all the news you could use and then lose tomorrow. I joked to Stu yesterday that I think that they just don't like us and that's why they keep asking us to be a part of these Oh no, they love us. Debates. Look, I know I it's important. I got it. But like it just by the fourth one you're like, "All right, how much new information can we learn about these candidates?" Yeah. I feel like everyone pretty much knows who they're going to vote for at this point. I'm pretty sure they – and so there's Ron DeSantis, there's Vivek Ramaswamy, mm -hmm. there is Nikki Haley, who, as far as I'm concerned, just disqualified herself. One million percent. I would argue that she was already disqualified. She was already disqualified. And then Chris Christie, I don't know who, how he made it into this <laughs> debate, but he, by the skin of his teeth he made it in. And I don't know who the hell out there other than whatever um, operatives are controlling a situation just to keep his fat ass in it. Mm. Somebody should have been not nice to Chris Christie a long time he ago. He may have threatened to eat someone if they didn't let <laughs> him in. He may have eaten somebody. <laughs> he may have, just to make an just, example. Just watch me do this. <laughs> I'm going to eat you. And then he did it. And everybody else was scared. They, tell me, prove to me that didn't happen. Can't prove it. Where's the lie? Somebody proved to me that Chris Christie's never eaten another human being. <laughs> Can't now do it. that would be a you debate I would like to watch. <laughs> Let's see if he if he catches you, you're in trouble. <laughs> now the key is you could probably outrun him. I don't know if Ron can in those boot lifts, like he can't outrun him, but we'll see. I feel like boot lifts would make you more secure. Not with that walk. <laughs> flippity flappity flippity flappity flippity flappity. Kind of weird. They're nice boots. I'm just going to be here for color color commentary tonight. Is yeah. that racist? Everything is racist. I'm a, these days. I'm a commentary of color. I could say it that way. Yeah, there I'm you go. I'm not color commentary. <laughs> I'm commentary of color. And uh, it'll be with Allie, I think, and somebody else. They're, I'm replacing Glenn tonight. Like Glenn's doing the first segment, and then they're going to, Glenn's Glenn. going to go do important things Glenn's like ducking out, like buy some of Abraham Lincoln's hair, <laughs> and then I'm going to fill in. <laughs> and then Glenn will be back for the, to, to dominate the conversation. <laughs> Through the debate. It'd be good. It'd be good. I think this thing is well promoted now at this point. I'm just trying to get through 30 seconds so we can go <laughs> get back to the regular scheduled programming. It's going to be a lot of fun. There may be some drinks involved. Chad's going to be there. So uh, I just assume. Tequila. Yeah. Well, we will make the best of it. I'm here because I got to go to Little Rock, Arkansas tomorrow. And this is halfway there rather than me going all the way back home. So I said, yeah, I'll do the debate coverage. And they'll probably bring pizza in. <laughs> so you'll get free pizza. Because we do love Marcos around here. <laughs> so, all right. 
we're not done for the rest of you. Hang tight. We'll be right back. Sarah? Yes. You ready for Christmas? No, I am not, actually. It's the most stressful time of the year. You know, uh, you can go to these Ivy League schools now and demand uh, Jewish genocide, and you can't be held accountable for it. I do not know what that has to do with Christmas, but yes, I am aware that there is some... Because the Jews don't celebrate Christmas. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Just want to get that out, make sure everybody knew. Um, But that's wild that you can do that on college campuses. And like they're out there testifying that they're not going to hold anybody accountable for that. Uh, Harvard and... Chad, people's lives have been arguably ruined because like they were at the same, you know, McDonald's as Nick Fuentes one time. And yet (laughs) people are literally taking to the streets and calling for Jews to be murdered and saying maybe Hitler had had something right. And everyone's okay with it. It's yeah. this weird place in society where like five minutes ago, you could get canceled if you breathed the same oxygen as Nick Fuentes uh, because he doesn't like the Jews. But now all of a sudden you can just call for their death yourself and everything's totally fine. Yeah. It's so weird to me. It is weird. Chuck Schumer accused Thomas Massey of uh, of an anti-Semitic tweet. Um. Because he said anti-Zionism isn't anti-Semitism on social media. Okay? Hmm. And then, uh, of course, they went into this big diatribe saying, Schumer said, this is anti-Semitic, disgusting, dangerous, and exactly the type of thing I was talking about in my Senate address. Take it down. Um, If only you cared half as much about our border as you do my tweets, Massey replied. Yeah. Um. Richie Torres of New York said Thomas Massey, a House Republican, is pitting American patriotism against Zionism. Most Americans are both pro-America and pro-Israel and see no contradiction between the two. Um, Yeah, Thomas Massey, who's who I look up for (laughs) anti-Semitism. Big controversial anti-Semitist. Oh, yeah. Straight Uh, out of, straight out, you know, from that bastion of anti-Semitism known as Kentucky. (laughs) Uh, he just would think like Chuck Schumer would say, you know, maybe I'm just not going to pick a random fight with Thomas it, Massey bro. on this. Just leave it. <laughs> I saw where Joe Biden this morning was demanding in a hurry, a rush, more money to Ukraine. Um, and uh, of course, Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, says he's drawing a line in the sand on Ukraine military assistance. Good. Um. We'll see. I'd like to draw a line in the sand for all Ukraine assistance. Was that, not is that just still military. going on? Ukraine thing? That's still happening? The war? Yeah. Apparently. Is it? I hadn't seen any footage. But, I mean, you would imagine that Joe probably does want uh, Zelensky happy so Zelensky doesn't find a need to expose all of these shady business dealings Joe was involved in with his son over there in Ukraine. Yeah. It's a great cash cow for Zelensky. Got to keep, got to keep laundering that money somehow. Right. Or, I mean, at least keep it under wraps. Make them happy. You know, and, and I alluded to this a little while ago. I want you to help me understand something because you're my sounding board. You help me make sense of this crazy world we live in. I mean, usually it's like not on your show. It's yeah for like in private, but sure. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. I, uh, well, let's, let's do it right now on the okay. show. Okay, right. That's fine. You know, The Rock was meeting at the Pentagon Mm -hmm. and at the Capitol. God only knows why. Why? And then people underneath were now calling him a Zionist sellout because he's not demanding ceasefire. I mean, he just says, had a great meeting at the Capitol, had a great meeting. It was beautiful walking through the halls, the hallowed halls of Congress in the Capitol. And he says it was a great meeting at the Pentagon with some very interesting people. And everybody's calling, oh, you need to be calling for a ceasefire. You need to be saying you're pro-Palestinian. Why aren't you putting Palestinian flags in this whole deal? Wouldn't it make sense that if you want to free Palestine and you want Palestinian liberation, that you would push for the eradication of Hamas? Yeah. Doesn't that rhetoric seem to be missing in all of these people's chants and their... 
yes. parades and their rallies. They yes. never say, let's get rid of Hamas so the Palestinian people, the citizens of Gaza, can actually be free. Yes. They, I mean, that that is uh, arguably who is holding them back. I've Verifiably, seen, demonstrably true. I don't know why that wouldn't be the case. Because I don't understand why... Israel, and I'm not saying Israel, I've said it from the very beginning, I, uh, the governments of man tend to lend them, lead, they, they, they lend themselves towards evil often. Israel is not exempt from that. Israel's done some bad things too, certainly have, um, and, but all governments do, including this one, America's. We do, we do evil things. We do bad things. But Israel has let people, they've had work visas, they let people come across the border back and forth, they allow them to have their water, and they allow them to have their, mm -hmm. you know, supply chain, and, and Elon Musk talked about turning on Skylink mm -hmm. so they can have their Wi-Fi and their, you know, whatever. So Israel seems to have had a, at least a complimentary hand in how these people go about their lives. I want somebody to help me understand that no, I don't think the average Jew in Israel probably doesn't like other Palestinians and vice versa. But when people are saying, you know, from the river to the sea, Palestine is going to be free, that's talking about a genocidal eradication mm -hmm. of Israel and specifically the Jewish people. When extreme Islamists are saying, first we're coming for the Saturday people, that's Jews, now we're going to come for the Sunday people, that's the Christians, I kind of don't want those people liberated. I, I, really? I want to make sure the people who are chanting for my death and to fill the earth with my blood and I'm the great Satan, I don't really want a ceasefire that lets those people come up for air. Really? I don't. Huh. Now, people can call me Islamophobic or racist or whatever, and it's really I'm just intolerant. <laughs> It's not that I'm a phobe. I'm intolerant. I'm intolerant of people okay. who want my blood to fill the earth. Wow. That is that's a high bar, Chad. I feel like you're being a little bit too picky. Well, I've extended grace where I thought I could extend it, but mm -hmm. I drew, the like Mike Johnson in Ukraine Money, I drew the line in the sand when they said that I'm the great Satan and death to America, and they want to come for the Sunday people. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the part of the nuance of this that I think a lot of people aren't understanding is that people tend to view things through the lens of just like, well, their their issue is with Israel, right? Like that that's their only issue. Their only issue is with Jews. It's none of our business. Right. And it's like, oh, no, we're next. I yeah. promise you. They want you dead, They too. want us dead, too. Yeah. So we should probably uh, take part in making sure that uh, they are eradicated. And by which, of course, I mean And I've Hamas, had a lot of people. I've had a lot of people in my, in my mentions who have said, this is, that's not Islam. Sure, I think it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Pretty sure it is. Is it not written in their holy book? Well, it is written in their holy book. And the, the bigger issue that I have with you so-called moderate Muslims is that you never seem to condemn that mm -hmm. rhetoric mm -hmm. or any terrorist acts. You never come out and say, that shit shouldn't have happened. Right. We condemn the extremists who did it. Right, right. So that kind of tells me you're complicit. Well, right. Or they never, they never come out and, and condemn Hamas for, oh, I don't know, uh, putting all of their headquarters underneath a hospital. Yeah. Where they know that it's going to put Palestinians in harm's way. Yeah. Using them as human shields. Now, I'll just lump in and uh guys, we're we're gonna go to um we're gonna go to four here in a second when I call for it. But uh I, I don't understand the rhetoric of so called Americans who say, Okay, we're gonna we want to ceasefire and free Palestine liberate Palestine, but you don't call out Hamas, which are the ones mm -hmm. that the Palestinians put into power, right. and now they're doing what they're doing. Hamas is a terrorist organization, which we tend to forget they're funded by and backed by Iran, which right. is the biggest supplier of terrorism on the <clears throat> globe. Yeah. We tend to forget all that kind of stuff. He's like, oh, free the citizens of Palestine. Well, are we going to talk about Hamas? Are we going to talk about Iran? Are we going to talk about any of that stuff? Then these so-called Americans, they say, oh, they're not praising Hamas. They're worried about the citizens of Palestine. Well, play clip number four. What we saw yesterday morning was decolonization taking place. Whoa! Not terrorist attacks. And this was just a taste of it. Israeli settlers fleeing like how they forced Palestinians to flee back in 
Now, that was October 8th, the day after the Hamas attack in Israel, which was October 7th, which led to summary executions, rapes, murders, beheadings, burnings, kidnappings, on and on and on and on and on. I put, you know, that video that's going around that has the different viewpoints of what happened that day, which if you've got the stomach to watch that, you should watch it, or you can go visit my Twitter and read what I've retweeted as a verbal summary of what happened on that day. And if you can walk away and be like this trick right here, who is a Philadelphia children's hospital worker talking mm -hmm. about being proud of what happened yesterday, proud of the Moss attack, you're sick absolutely sick there's no justification for that type of rhetoric much less that type of logic that comes out of somebody's brain but again i don't know for those of you who couldn't see her name her first name was romance which that in and of itself ought to tell you how fucked up this generation is romance you're naming your kids romance and star and apple and north it was weird <laughs> it did not match her last name no because it was a very um not romance name <laughs> I mean, it looked like a Middle Eastern name that I would not be able to pronounce. And then the first name's just Romance. Romance. <laughs> yeah. A weird. There does seem to be some conflicting ideologies <laughs> just in the given and surnames. <laughs> I also feel like I'm, I'm going to name you Grace Murder. <laughs> Probably not what her last name means, but. I also feel like. They I'm just in, don't fit. I'm in a time warp anytime I see someone on video wearing a mask. Still wearing a mask. I have to double check the date. Still wearing a mask. I mean, that right there should tell you who you're dealing with. This person is broken. They're wearing a mask October 8th, 2023. Do you see the clip I put on my Twitter um, of the guy on the Spirit Airlines who climbs over the guy sitting next to him in the airplane? And the guy's like, what are you doing? And then the guy starts bitching at him. Don't you tell me. You ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. No. He's wearing a mask. And he's like, you don't have the ability to tell anyone that you're not going to be told what to do while you're wearing a what? mask. <laughs> I mean, you are a walking uh, paradox. What is going on in, on airplanes these days? People losing their shit. That's why really? I swore them off. I'm going to fly next week, but I, I have no intentions of flying anytime soon. You're going to be like me. I just hate, I just hate flying. I just don't want to do it. That's ever. why when I go to Little Rock, Arkansas this week, this weekend... If I don't die first from the whatever gas is coming out of my belly, <laughs> I'm driving a Little Rock, driving back. Yeah. It's Little Rock, Arkansas is where I'm going to be this weekend. If y'all don't know, the Looney Bin, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, five shows. Tickets are available at watchchad.com. Next week at, um, in St. Cloud, Florida. Sunny St. Cloud. Never been there. Yep. It's a great club. <laughs> I'll say that. Where is St. Cloud? It's outside of Orlando. Okay. Kissimmee, St. Cloud. It's it's sort of Disney. Ish. But they have real mice. Okay. <laughs> right. Not not the mice who want to trans your kids. Yeah. Okay. They have real mice. That's good. Like, I would prefer real mice, honestly, at this point. And me too. Me too. <laughs> it's 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 where my people live. It's my kind of redneck over there. Okay. St. Cloud. All so right. I'm looking forward to being over there. Party foul Steve picking me up from the airport. Oh great. I'm going in a day early. So I, can, so I can stay at Steve's house. Oh, I love that. Which means there's going to be a lot of uh, cigar smoke. Let's put it that way. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of consumption. Yeah. I'm not in a funny mood today. Can't wait to go do these debates. <laughs> Hang tight. We'll be right back. <laughs> guys you've heard me talk about it for the last couple of weeks i want to continue to push you to uh encourage you i should say to go get the movie the blind it's the story of the phil of the robertson family particularly phil robertson you know phil is a good dude he's just a he uh when you guys got married you know you and phil came in and kind of he read did. a blessing over you guys he and did and gave us advice he was pretty straightforward on that he was i watched sarah just over there just kind of puckered up on some of those things he's telling me all about how i had to submit he wasn't was wrong like, he wasn't wrong girl uh -oh. he wasn't wrong 
But, uh, we're coming up on five years strong. Yeah, y'all are doing great. So we're doing good. Phil's a good dude, but Phil hasn't always been a good dude. Phil actually used to be a really bad dude. And uh, if you feel like you got some bad dudes in your life, or you're a bad dude yourself, and you need to find out if there's any hope and redemption for you, check out the movie The Blind, The True Story of the Robertson Family. You can get it right now on Blaze TV. We don't own it, so we can't give it to you. Even if you're subscribed, we can't because we didn't make it. But uh, we would rather you be able to watch it here than to get it on like Amazon or Apple or something like that. So check it out. You can go to blazetv.com slash the blind let me make sure that i'm giving you the right address on that i think i'm right on that deal uh but yeah uh, i just scroll right on past it slash the blind that's what it is right blazetv.com mm-hmm. slash it. the blind go get it and you'll own it you'll own it and you'll support uh you'll the, own it through your blaze tv subscription. through your blaze tv subscription so when you log on to the blind you can watch it it's a good movie it's a good movie it they, is a good movie a we enjoyed it, it. And especially, you know, knowing the family personally, right. it's kind of cool and right. that kind of stuff. Yeah, that that for me was very full circle when I started working here because yeah. I, before I even was in this business, you know, like drove to Florida and when went through West Monroe and stopped at the Duck Dynasty, you know, yeah. command center and like I watched their show. And so to be on a network with them having already that, watched that was, their show. My full wild. circle moment with them was obviously the TV was huge. The TV show was huge. And then you'd see it in West Monroe. And and, and next thing you know, I'm going to Nicaragua with them to work with orphan children and wow. stuff like that. And we were doing stuff together. And, yeah. And then we ran into Missy and Mia Robertson. We did. We were walking into the theater to go speak at, oh, you anti-Semites. We were going to speak to the Jewish coalition <laughs> here in Dallas, you know, 400 strong in there in the theater. And it looked weird because she's yelling our name from across the parking lot. And yeah. we turned around. like, we're not on a date. <laughs> we're actually here for work. <laughs> in a very like, public place like, where there's going to um, be a lot of people watching yeah, us. We're not so. on a date. We're not on a date. Yeah, that but, was yeah, funny. Then we went in there and spoke to that group. Um, but good people. They solid are. good people and uh supporting them i'm glad they made that story of phil's life uh american beauty by sarah.com check it out be sure to subscribe to all of her stuff for her socials um as well as her youtube i never got that youtube plaque they never you told me you got to apply for that yeah you have to apply for the that plaque and then if you get any sort of violation yeah. you can't have well, a I'm violation 368 369 thousand subscribers on youtube just go apply for it. It's on the dashboard. <sighs> no, nah, where? You got to be on a computer. Yeah, you have to be on a computer. I'm never on a computer. I know. I'm not it ain't happening, and I don't want their damn plaque. So, someone drew a picture of a YouTube plaque for me and mailed it to me. That's funny. <laughs> um, and if you're not subscribed to Chad Prather on YouTube, I never ask you to do it, but go do it. It actually does help me, okay? So go subscribe, and uh, we'll, we'll grow up by tens and tens, <laughs> all right? But uh, we're here tomorrow night. My buddy uh, Kyle Thompson, the host of Undaunted Life, will be my guest tomorrow. And don't forget, overtime. I'm going to make Sarah sit right here on this couch, and I'm going to give her a hard time for overtime. It's our favorite time every week, okay? I love you. God bless you. We'll see you later. Bye.